DC motors are capable of spinning at high speeds, up to 10,000 RPM or more, but often they don't create much torque at the output. So even if we have a motor that can create enough power for our application, where we know power is the velocity, angular velocity times the torque, it may not produce enough torque. So to fix this situation, we can use gearing. So here's an example of gearing. Uh, this is a shaft right here at the center of gear A, spinning this gear A in this direction, which causes gear B to spin in the opposite direction. And if we counted up the number of teeth on gear A here, we would see that it has 12 teeth. And the number of teeth on gear B here is 18. So we're going to define the gear ratio for this gear head from this input shaft spinning on the motor to this output shaft, which is spinning more slowly, as G is equal to NB divided by NA, or 1.5 in our example. So we can see that uh, this gear spins once every time this gear spins 1.5 times. And so we can write that relationship as omega out is equal to omega in divided by g. We also know that an ideal gearhead shouldn't gain or add power or take away power. It should be a purely a transformer that keeps the power constant. So we should be able to write that the power at the input here at the motor is equal to the angular velocity at the input times the torque at the input, which is equal to the power at the output, which is omega out times torque out. And because we have this relationship that omega out is equal to omega in divided by g, then we know that the output torque must be equal to g times the input torque. So this gearing here accomplishes both slowing down the motor as well as increasing the amount of torque available. Now if we were to draw the speed torque curve for the motor by itself, it would look something like this. It would have a no load speed and stall torque. And it would have a continuous operating region so that everything to the left of this vertical line can be operated continuously, and anything under the triangle can be operated intermittently. So this is the speed torque curve for the original motor, but now if we add this gearing to it, then what it's going to do is going to reduce the no load speed by a factor of g, and it's going to increase the stall torque by a factor of g, and it's going to move out the continuous operating region by a factor of g. So what we've done by adding gearing to our motor here is we've lowered the maximum speed we can get, but have incre increased the maximum torque. So now if we're designing a motor and gearing for a particular application, we just have to make sure that the intermittent operating conditions always lie inside this triangle and that the continuous operating region always lies to the left of this new dashed vertical line. So we've lost some points here in this region, but we've gained these points down here. And for most robotic applications, for example, we need higher torque and slower speeds so the gearhead is appropriate.